Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from Sierra T Designs, and today I have some clean and simple floral anniversary cards to share with you. So let's jump right in. So I am not going to create a mat for my cards, which if you've been with my channel for a while, you might giggle at because I, I honestly thought it was kind of funny. I am just going to cut down my panels with some stitched rectangle dies. This just gives the outside just a little bit of something extra. You don't need this step, but I like to add things to my my cards and I do struggle a little bit with clean and simple designs simply because I want to add all the things so sometimes I have to push myself not to add more because I don't necessarily need it so as you saw in the opening I am going to create two cards and I brought out the Tim Holtz floristry stamp it's this large floral image beautiful stamp and I'm gonna stamp the corner down just up in the top right corner because I thought that would be really fun. I saw a design similar to this a little while ago, but it's one of those things when you're scrolling through which whatever thing you're on, I, I think it was Pinterest, it might have been Instagram, and you're scrolling through and you see something and then you have to try to go backwards to see it again and it's disappeared. So then I had to jot down notes and I'm like floral in top right corner, you know, little label sentiment to remind myself what the heck it was even looking like because I couldn't find it again. So I don't know who did this original idea, whoever it is, very beautiful cards, but I couldn't find it again. So I, I don't know who to credit here for this, but it is a very cool design and I really, really think it turned out pretty. So I did stamp both. I did have to bring out my Memory Misty for this. So the Memory Misty has a 12 by 12 stamping area and anytime I want to stamp off, this is generally what I have to use because the regular Misty is not large enough to have a stamp this size and stamp off of the page. So I'm really lucky my husband bought this for me a couple of Christmases ago. I don't use it a lot, but it's phenomenal anytime I want to stamp off or if I'm stamping something on like a slimline card because they don't fit well in my Misty. Um, but this does come with a stamping block. The only reason I wouldn't use that uh, is because I did need to stamp it multiple times. I stamped it multiple times because I'm using a Copic Safe ink. I'm opting to color this with my Copic markers. So because of that, I had to use a Copic friendly paper and ink. Luckily for me, my everyday hammer mill that I use all the time is Copic Safe, but the inks you use are not. So like VersaFine, you wouldn't use. Unless you were going to emboss it, you could do that. But I used, I believe I used Gina K Amalgam ink for this because it is a Copic safe ink. And I did just lightly run my heat tool over it before I started coloring with my Copics just to make sure that I wasn't going to smear the black lines around. I do generally try to stay within the lines. You're going to see me, I'm going to color petal to petal. This is mostly so I don't smear colors, not because you have to color this way. And when I work with my Copics, I generally like to work in three color blends. There is no right or wrong here. I, I think I end up telling you guys almost in every video that you do what works for you. And as long as you are happy with the card at the end, that is all that matters. So if you want to use two colors, if you want to use four colors, it doesn't matter. Whatever works for you. But when I do Copic coloring, generally I aim for a, th a four color blend just because I, I tend to like how that looks. So for the purples here, I've gone in with V12, V15, and V17. And you saw that I laid down a wash of my lightest color to start, which was the V12. I go in with V15 and then kind of add a little bit of interest coming out of where I want the darkest areas to be, which in this case is the center of that flower. And then I go in with my darkest V17 and just kind of darken up the very center around the flower there. Then I go back through with my 15 and my 17 to just finish it off and blend out the color. Again, I am not the best Copic colorist. There are some phenomenal Copic colorists out there if you want to check them out. Kelly Taylor is one. She makes some stunning colored cards. Um, I just kind of dabble in Copic markers. I, I love how they look, but it's one of those things where I should practice more to get a more... Um, like, I don't know. Um, Alberto is also a phenomenal Copic colorist. Um, he's on Instagram though. So you'd have to go and check him out. He does a lot of the Tim Holtz stamp releases now he colors for them. So if you are interested in Copic coloring, there are a lot of great resources out there. So 
go check those out. But uh, I kind of just dabble in my Copic coloring. So, you know, if if you are kind of just newer to it or practicing, having this kind of just little corner image to color is a lot of fun. I didn't bring in a ton of colors here. I decided that I wanted my leaves to be kind of a teal color. So I went with BG01, BG05, and BG09. And that's kind of what I chose out of the colors that I own. I don't own every Copic color, so I do have to be selective. Oh, and the center of the purple flowers was Y19, just so you were aware. I have had people ask me in the past the names of the actual colors and why I don't say them in the video. Honestly, they don't, I don't go by what the color name is because that doesn't tell you if it's going to blend well with anything else. The numbers are what tell you if things are going to blend well together. So that is what I go by. But when I link them, you can see what the color names actually are. So if that's important to you, if you click on the link, all the color names actually come up. So that's kind of helpful. And then for my pink colored flowers, I went in with R18, or sorry, R81, R83, and R85, which is the red markers. But because there's such a range of markers, um, they do have a really pretty pink in there. There's also pink markers though. So, I mean, it's really up to you as to what you want to choose. Again, I just kind of went through my collection and I chose things that I thought would look really pretty together, but I didn't pull, you know, tons and tons of different markers. So, I am going to go in for the last of the leaves that are sticking out. I brought in a brown mix. I just, I wanted to tip this a little further into the fall color palette. It's not super fall, but I think that it works. Uh, so I brought in E13, E17, and E18. And I'm going to use that for any of the leftover leaves that I have, except for the ones coming out behind the purple flowers. I am going to go in with my Y19 and just kind of dot it along there to just add a little bit of interest. Again, no right or wrong way to do this. And there's so many ways you could color this. You know, you could use colored pencils, you could use pencil crayons, you could use watercolor. Like there are so many things you could do here if you wanted to. I just opted to use my Copics because I don't bust them out as much as I should because they're not an inexpensive purchase. If anybody else is collecting Copics, you know that they're not, you know, the cheapest marker on the market. So I really need to bust them out and use them more. And this floral just leaned itself beautifully to coloring like this. And it's not overwhelming because that stamp is quite large. So, you know, it's it's time consuming to color something that large. So with just the corner being used, it's really kind of a fun way to practice and bring in different color blends that maybe you're not used to. Also, if you're struggling to pick colors that go together, I have seen so many cool things. I think it was on Pinterest of people sharing their blends. So, you know, they'll, they'll tell you the three or four markers they like to use, and then you can kind of buy those and try them out if that's something of interest to you. So it is a lot of fun to kind of work this way and bust out different markers and just have a play because as I said, I own them. So I really need to make more effort to use them and have fun with them just because they are a lot of fun to color. And it's really interesting when you get these cool blends with them and that's something I really want to play with more. So I am going to have to kind of start working with them more often, but I have a few different coloring mediums, so it's hard to choose when I am working on a project, which ones I actually want to use. So to help my images stand out against the background a little bit better, I did bring in N0, which is a neutral gray, and I'm just going to lightly outline the whole image here. And please excuse my face in the corner there. I I had a bit of a cold, so I had a really red nose. And I'm just, you know, it's one of those things. It's kind of funny. You just see my nose and my eye poking in the video there. But, but yeah, so I'm just going to go around the whole image with my N0 marker. And just that just adds this subtle bit of shading and shadow to the florals. Helps them stand out from the background a touch. You'll see here in a second because I'll hold it up so you can see it after I've gone all around everything. And that kind of gives you an idea. Very, very subtle. You don't need to do this if you're not comfortable going around the images. And you could do it in different colors. This would look really pretty in a pale blue as well, or even a pale pink if that was something that interested you. I opted to go gray just to keep it a little bit more simple and just give it a little bit of interest. But yeah, I'm going to hold it up here as soon as I go around the extra little pieces on the inside, making sure that they have a little bit of shadow to them as well. And you'll hopefully be able to see a little bit of that difference there so that it kind of makes sense. I did have to get my camera to kind of focus on it, but I will hold them up at the end and you should hopefully be able to see it a little bit better. 
And because I love white highlights, I did go in with my white gel pen. I'm just adding some sketchy lines. This, you could skip this step if this is not your thing or you don't have a white gel pen, anything like that. But it just kind of adds a little bit more interest and texture. And as I said, I don't always know when to stop and I struggle with clean and simple cards. So because of that, I tend to, you know, want to add all the things that I'm allowed to add to the card. So I did go in with the white gel pen and just added a little bit of interest around the card. So if you are new to my channel, welcome. I hope that you will consider subscribing if you haven't already. I do new videos every Monday and Thursday, and I'm really trying hard to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and I, I think we're going to manage it. So I am incredibly excited, and I if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing and come hang out with me. I would really appreciate it. Like I said, I do two videos a week, so I think there's a fair amount of content here if you're at all interested. Um, yeah, so... For my sentiment, I did go and cut out a strip here. I I don't know if this die is still available. I'll check when I'm linking my stuff, but I always link stuff after I've finished editing the video. So I don't actually know. I should have checked, but I forgot. So the Simon Says Stamp, it is the label dies, I believe. I've had them a long time. I don't know if they're still available. So if they're available, I'll have them linked and listed down below. If not, you could easily just trim a piece of cardstock and that would work fine too. It's just that I own them. And again, I try to use the stuff that I own. So that is what I went through with for there. And then for my sentiment, I used a stamp set that I, I'm pretty much positive Simon doesn't have anymore. And it is the You Have My Heart stamps. And it's just this happy anniversary. And I'm sorry this got out of focus. It's more interested in focusing on my heat gun than the actual heat embossing of the white sentiment there. But I did trim them down just into some little labels so that I could just pop them up on there. I want everything to kind of be dainty. I'm trying to keep it, as I said, clean and simple. So I'm trying not to just add a whole bunch of random stuff to it. Though I am going to go in and add some pearls in a minute because I cannot resist. You guys know I love pearls so much. They are my favorite thing to add to a card. But I did pop these up just a touch, just to give them a little something extra. These are the thin 3D foam squares. They are very, very thin. I honestly think they're just over an eighth of an inch. So they're quite thin and they just give it a little bit of something. And when I'm making a clean and simple card, I do tend to like to add some dimension to them. I just, I love how that looks, you know, it, it just gives it a little bit of something extra without being bulky and adding a whole bunch of weight to it. I mean, visual weight. So that is something that I, I love to do, but there's no wrong way. Glue them down. That would be perfectly fine too. This could be a birthday card. This could be a thinking of you card. I think this could be, you know, just saying hello. Like this, this could be anything you want it to be. I just, I happen to need an anniversary card. So that's why I made them. And I'm trying to make more than one card now um, because I, I've started doing markets. So I sell my cards as well at markets. So if I, you know, make one that I need to use and then I can make, have one more that go into the the bin to be sold to somebody else or if a friend needs it or I you know have a pen pal that's having an anniversary that kind of thing I try to make two so I have one on hand but I am just going to glue this down onto my base and I like to keep bases and panels of the A2 size just made on hand all the time that's why we didn't really trim any cardstock down this time because I do always kind of have A2 size bases and panels just ready to go so I'm just going to tear it straight down and then that's pretty much the card. I am going to add some pearls as I said because I could not resist and I went in with these kind of chocolatey pearls. The company that makes them I don't think sells them anymore so I'll try to find you guys something similar if I can. If not just pick a fun embellishment that you love. I went with these I believe they're they were called dark chocolate pearls but I honestly I don't know if you can get these exact ones anymore. So I recently placed an order with Simon so that I could try out some pearls from different companies uh, because my preferred company is no longer selling them. So I'm going to have to see how they work out when I get that order in. But I am really excited because you guys know I love, I love pearls so, so much. So I'm pretty excited to play with them when they come in. Hopefully this next week, I think. We'll see. Who knows? Mail is always a little bit slow, I find. So whenever they show up, they show up and that's okay. 
So I did just place those pearls across the panel. And those are the cards I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope you'll leave me a like, leave me a comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I do new videos every Monday and Thursday. And I am doing live streams now every second Thursday. So a week from today, I have a live stream. I will be working on this really cool water a watercolor no I'm adding a waterfall into the journal I want to say the water journal for some reason it's not it's like a Christmas journal but pop on over on Thursday if you want to 3 p.m pst I will be working on it so I hope to see you guys there thank you so much and I'll see you again very soon bye bye for now